maybe that's okay. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a scary place where we are right now because there doesn't seem to be any real... Uh, it doesn't seem to be any real energy want to be spent on trying to retrospectively think about what happened in 2020 and 2021 that got us to 2023. And I, I get worried sometimes that there are people out there who are so interested in the next thing coming and the so interested in the next thing coming and so interested in the next thing coming that there, this this kind of hyper attention shifting is actually something that is, is used against us. And we've got to be very careful that we are not encouraged to rush into the future, um, eyes wide shut, screaming and yelling, which is basically what we were encouraged to do at the beginning of the pandemic. Now, you might look back on it and think, no, that's not really true. But, you know, telling people that we had to shut society down globally for 15 days or 30 days, that's pretty much as drastic as it's ever been, ever, in the history of modern man. Now, there's been wars and all those other things where, of course, massive Changes in human behavior have resulted in massive casualties. But with a sort of, let's say, well, a motivation based more on on things that would be, wars would be based on, you know, like, I don't know, people stealing people's girlfriends or lots of money or encroaching on territory and not a biological boogeyman that's almost impossible to visualize, quantify, purify, or 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 study in, in in a laboratory. And so that's what I think becomes so shocking about this is that people have so willingly accepted all the tenets of the biology that has allowed us to ventilate people for a year that prob- lots of them probably shouldn't have been ventilated. The use of remdesivir on anybody for anything has never really been justified with any medical literature at all. I mean, let's just let's just call a spade a spade here. Hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, uh, famotidine, any of these other drugs have at least a track record of not killing people en masse not damaging people en masse because they've tested it on lots of people and lots of people had no damage at all. Remdesivir basically has a red thread through its use and that is that if you were to give remdesivir to a healthy person, they wouldn't be healthy anymore. Let's just be very clear about this. This is not something you can give to a healthy person and have them go, yeah, I don't notice anything at all. When you give an aspirin, to a person who doesn't have a lot of inflammation, it has not a lot of effects. And so we're not talking about apples and oranges when we talk about the things that we talk about on television, when we talk about the things that we talk about in social media, because we're not adequately assigning the gravity to the right places, the right causes. And we have assigned most of the gravity to this amorphous, biological phenomenon called the virus and we are through any means necessary forced to ignore this list over here which is a list of harms that essentially if we don't account for it becomes part of the tally accounted for by the biological phenomena the mythology And that's, again, where you can take the average shark fin and make it into a megalodon if you don't adequately attribute sailboat sails to sailboats, but you start to attribute anything with the shape of a a shark fin to a shark. And so with the PCR test, we have basically roped in anything with the shape of a shark fin and called it a shark, and so we have big sharks where people had like multiple organ failure, 
and COVID ravaged their bodies. And we have people who got barely sick at all and had no respiratory disease, but died of a heart attack. And that's also COVID. And then lots and lots of people with respiratory symptoms and no positive test respiratory symptoms and a positive test and no discernible difference between them except that diagnostic test and people jumping to huge biological conclusions based on that one observation. And so it's it's really frustrating. It is really a frustrating place to be in because people are so convinced they're so convinced that they're right. And that may be how people will characterize us as well, but it would be a mischaracterization because we aren't trying to cordon off a very small possibility space and put a flag in it and claim it for gigaohm biological. What we're trying to do is illustrate the fact that almost everyone else is very hyper-focused on a little pinpointed aspect of this and trying to sell you a little pinpointed aspect of this, this angle. And it is an angle wherein there is a possibility that a single RNA sequence can be so diabolically nasty that it can be so contagious, that it can be so infectious, that it can be so virulent that the entire planet should fear it. And that story is a lie if any of the chemistry that we understand about DNA and RNA is true. It's a lie. They have to know this. So the only way to achieve the illusion of an RNA that's so dangerous and so infectious and so virulent and so hyper-infective that the whole world should fear it would be to make lots of pure copies of it and put it in lots of places and let people draw that conclusion themselves. Even if there's no evidence for a, for a particularly dangerous disease, just evidence of a particularly ubiquitous sequence. Or even worse, a ubiquitous set of, of PCR amplicons that happen to show up or happen to be detectable so we've got to reel it in, we've got to back the truck up, and we've got to realize that we may have been set up from the very beginning with a very controlled narrative space in which many, many actors have been introduced as people representing the yin and the yang within this debate space. And it's little people like Tim Poole and, and Sam Cedar. It's bigger people like... And they're not even that big, but the Weinsteins and the and the and the the people under Joe Rogan, you know, I don't really know all their names, but I can see them in the pictures, you know, Shapiro, all of them that have like a million or two million followers. You've got all these niche sort of injection points where as long as those those sheepdogs or whatever you want to call them, uh magnets are there then all of the all of the fragments underneath all of the shards underneath will kind of organize around those major magnetic fields and some of those magnetic fields are based on their appearance and their fitness or their attractiveness like or 